Hi everybody, we're going to do an auction preview video today. So I'm here at the Philips office in Hong Kong in Central, joined by my friend Shoyo Kawamura, who is a specialist at Philips. And we're going to have, firstly, a look at Geneva auction number 14. Hong Kong has a bunch of the pieces from the upcoming Geneva auction, and we're going to have a little look at them and pick out a few highlights. Shoyo, can you tell us a little more about the Geneva auction? Sure. Well, thank you very much, Mark. And I'm absolutely delighted and excited to have you here to take a look at some of our uh, you know, rare and fine timepieces that we have on offer at the Geneva Watch Auction 14. Mm -hmm. So the Geneva Watch Auction 14 will be held um, on the 5th and the 7th of November at the La Reserve Hotel. Okay. So well, without further ado, would you like to take a look at some? Yeah, yeah let's do it. All right. Sounds good. So one of the great things about being on site um, for an auction preview is we get to see just a lot, lot more pieces. I mean, show you this represents what about half of what Geneva is doing right now? Yes, that is correct. Roughly around half of what we have on offer in Geneva. Okay, well, definitely some very fine and unusual things here. Um, let's grab it out of the cabinet and have a closer look at the macro bench. Sure, with pleasure, Mark. All right, so we're going to start with this lot one zero one. Show you tell us a little bit more about this piece. So here we have a beautiful Lange, mm -hmm. Zuna, um, 1815 Handwerkskunst mm -hmm. uh, Tubion in pink gold mm -hmm. with a beautiful, basically hand engraved, grayish, grainy doll mm -hmm. uh, with applied pink gold indexes and pink gold hands. Mm -hmm. um, Extremely sleek watch uh, with definitely a very distinct appeal. It was made as a limited edition of 30 pieces. Um, and it is truly one of those lungers uh, that sort of steps a little bit outside its boundaries. It's but really something. I love it. Yeah. It's really something. It's beautiful. And I can wind this up, right? Yes, you can. It's always fun seeing these tourbillon cages spring to life. <laughs> There you go. Here we go. I'm almost a little surprised they didn't make this in their honey gold. Yeah, I but I guess they don't always do the honey gold, huh? They don't always do it. They always reserve it for, you know, um, some other particular pieces. But this present example, I have to say, you know, extremely sleek 39.5 millimeter case. Um, and it still, you know, has a very, very prominent wrist presence. Yeah. But again, it slips nicely under your cuff as well. Man, beautiful. Alrighty, man. Thanks for showing us. So next up, we have this beautiful Patek Philippe Nautilus Lot 214. And this is the reference 3700-1, which is um, basically the first ever Nautilus uh, reference ever produced. Um, and this present example we have is from circa 1978. Wow. So, um, you know, really one of the earlier yeah. uh, versions of the 3700. And as you can see, um, really well kept too. Really, really well kept uh, with a long bracelet. Um, and again, you know, when you compare like the design and aesthetics of the 3700 uh, with, you know, the 5711, um, the design and aesthetics really hasn't changed much. Yeah, well, so we brought out a couple of the descendants, right? Mm -hmm. Just to have a look at all of them together. This is more of a bedazzled <laughs> example. Um, but as you can see, you know, the Slightly size. more flashy. Slightly more flashy. But it's uh, the 5711, which is this one, mm -hmm. is actually a little bigger, huh? Just slightly. It is slightly, uh, I would say, uh, thicker. I see. Um, oh, you're you right. Know, but it's actually the, the same is, diameter, huh? It is, it is. Um, it's jumbo sized at 42 millimeters. Wow, beautiful. Okay, and then also we got a 3800 mm -hmm. so that you can see the difference this as well. This is the mid-size variant of the Nautilus family. Man, I love the 3800. 3800 is, for me, like I one of my favorite Nautilus. Yeah, you know? same. And uh, awesome. in comparison to the 42 millimeter uh, 3700, the 3800 comes in at a friendly 37.5. Mm, yeah, good size. Well, not for everybody, but for me, certainly a good size. Great size, yeah. I love the old logo too. The old logo is so mm -hmm. nice. This one's a platinum, huh? It's really got the This hat. is uh, a platinum one. Wow, incredible. Awesome. All right, well, an original 3700 from one of the earliest in the production. Yes. Good stuff. Lot two and four. Thanks, Shoyo. Thank you very much. And here, um, I'm extremely excited, humbled, um, to basically show you the f probably one of the finest collection of uh, Jean timepieces. Um, 
and it's basically the number one set of the subscription series. The set's wild, man. Number one of every single model that exactly. was made. Um, and without further ado, uh, lot 138 here, we have here a beautiful two Beyond Sovran, and it is the very first um, subscription piece that he made. This one's amazing, man. Like just it's, It is truly amazing because, um, you know, one thing, yes, it is one out of 20, but uh, the state of preservation that, um, you know, it encapsulates is, is phenomenal. For these early um, gold dials, if I may say, um, they usually age, um, you know, with a sort of like a patina mm. uh, or like a tropicalization. Mm. But for this example, it's extremely, extremely clean. The Turbion cage is amazing. And I Turbion love how cage is amazing too, yes. Like and this shape. is basically the very, very first wristwatch to, um, to incorporate a remontoire uh, system. And this is basically the mm -hmm. little um, device here. Mm -hmm. Awesome, okay. That's the Turbion. Let's have a look at the resonance. The resonance here we have again is also um, from the same collection, from the same uh, original owner, uh, and it is also part of the subscription series, number one as well. But here we have a beautiful two-tone variant. As you can see, the lugs are in pink gold. Yeah, I've never seen this before. This is uh, awesome. really basically awesome. one of three examples known in this configuration with a silver dial. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, and this is also with the old brass movement too. Before this is to yes, switch yes. to gold. Uh, this present example is from two thousand and three. So with these resonances, you got to wind yes. up here at twelve. Mm -hmm. Bring the focus back on that. There we go, spinning away. Mm -hmm. And if you can flip and then it. That crown here yeah, exactly. is to sink to it up. Sink it up. There we go. Oh, killer. So good. <laughs> Love it. Super cool piece. All right. And here we have the um, basically Jean's chronograph. Um, and it's, again, this is, uh, well, this was not part of the subscription uh, model, but basically. Uh, clients had the first right of refusal for this piece. These were really underrated for a while. Like I didn't see yes. them, they, they don't come up all that often. They, they, they honestly don't. Um, and again, this example here is, is from the Octa series. So it, when you flip it to the movement side, you see a, um, an off-centered uh, winding rotor. I love the layout of this though. The nice. layout of this is really, really interesting because you know, differing slightly away from, you know, Jean's other timepieces where the dial would be mounted on. Mm. Um, here we actually have the, um, you know, the, the, the background or the gold part of the dial actually mounted on. Mm. Yeah. And then again, with Jean's signature um, asymmetric dial layout. Awesome. Okay, and then Calendrier next. Yes. So here we have, again, um, one of the very first uh, Octocalendries. And here, another self-winding wristwatch. Also, you know, off the subscription model, but again, was offered to, um, you know, clients and collectors who were, uh, who purchased um, and subscribed to Jean's very first wristwatches mm -hmm. with the first right of refusal. Let's have a look yeah. at the last one. This is the most basic of the set on the table. This is, yes. So it's one of the cleanest um, genres, I would say, uh, from the Octa series. And these have all been 38 millimeter cases too. Yes, like so the early the genres are all 38 millimeters. And then the later ones, uh, they enhance the size to 40. Really long power reserve, 120 hours on the yes. power reserve. And this was basically um, one of the longest uh, power reserve wristwatches uh, when it was launched. That's awesome. And so the base movement for these three are actually all the same? Yes. These were all octa bases. Yes. And then with the with... complications added on. Mm -hmm. The octa base is pretty amazing too. Like that recent um, only watch with the, with the hands, mm -hmm. the one that Jean yeah. did with Francis Ford Coppola <laughs> is also based on this movement. Yeah. All right, man. These are sweet. Thanks for, thanks for showing them us. No problem. So 
if you thought we had a big boy set uh, and that was kind of the end of the story with the FP Jordans we just looked at, um, we have a full set of Dufours here. And this is like something else as well. I can't decide what I like better, whether I like the Dufour set or the FP Jordan set. I mean, they're really both up there. It's a, it's a really, really hard decision to make, Mark. Yeah. Like, so in terms of what I mean by set, mm -hmm. we have a simplicity, which is the finest three-hander uh, that has ever been made to some people. Uh, we have the duality, which is actually kind of like a resonance. Yeah. It's kind of like a resonance mm. without the second uh, without the second face on it. We have a pair of sonneries. So we have a wristwatch sonnery, and we also have a pocket watch sonnery, which is just like, and it blows my mind to see all this stuff. Yes. Let's have a look under the macro bench, lot 115, the simplicity right yes. here. Yes. From the gear trains to the pinions, mm -hmm. every single component mm -hmm. of a wristwatch is literally handmade mm -hmm. by himself. So the simplicity was originally made, um, you know, uh, with a 34 millimeter case. And then he, uh, the later creations, he pumped up the case size uh, to 37 millimeters. Mm. So a total of 200 examples made. Yeah. Mm. You know what's really interesting about this one for me is the Geneva stripes. It is, yeah. Not just because, like, obviously I've seen Geneva stripes before, mm -hmm. but there's something about this one where like the stripes are almost watery. Yes. Like you can barely tell where one stripe ends and one stripe finishes. Mm -hmm. And so it feels so like smooth and you know, it, it looks liquid. It really does. All right, let's yep. look at the duality next. So here we have an extremely uh, attractive um, 34 millimeter um, duality in pink gold. Man. And basically the duality is um, DeFore's uh, second, you know, wristwatch ever made in this series, I would say. Um, and also it is the very, very first wristwatch in the world to feature two separate escapements, like, you know, the resonance. Um, as you can see here, um, you have basically one escapement here towards the bottom and then um, another escapement towards the three o'clock position or nine o'clock position if you flip it over. But um, again, this was, um, you know, a mechanism and a movement found in uh, a pocket watch. Um, and he decided basically to miniaturize it and he has achieved it in a 34 millimeter case, which is incredible. Yeah. And the whole reason uh, why he decided to incorporate two separate escapements is if one balance, you know, runs slightly slower and the other runs slightly faster, it basically averages it out. So it enhances its precision. Mm. Yeah and through the principle of resonance exactly yep. and um you know originally you know dufour had plans to make i believe 25 pieces mm -hmm. but due to complications he only made nine of them wow um and this is number eight i love it um, so this is actually the last one that he produced uh, because you also have to take into consideration the number zero zero mm -hmm. uh, which was uh sold you know previously at Philips as well. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Let's have a look at the sonnery. Okay. So here we have basically uh, Dufour's Grand and Petite sonnery in wristwatch format. Wow. And this is, again, with movement number one. So this was basically Dufour's very, very first wristwatch that he made. And it was also the very first wristwatch in the world to feature a Grand and Petite sonnery. So you know, a premiere for both worlds and a truly stunning timepiece. And this one he made in 1992. And let's have a look finally at that big, bold, and beautiful pop watch. Wow. So here we go basically right to the start of, um, of Dufour. And um, this is basically again a grand and petite sonnery uh, but in pocket watch format and this is basically the first ever watch um, that he created with his signature on the dial and also his signature on the movement and this is a again a unique piece um, with uh, again movement number one wow so this one was made in um, 1989 and wow. it basically took him three years to turn this um, 
pocket watch into you know this wrist into the wristwatch huh? format that we have here and this is basically you know a set of um uh, you know ground and petite sonnery timepieces by Dufour and and it's 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 a unique set that's it's movement man. number one and this is not just any wristwatch but you know collectors now really have the chance to to acquire honestly an important part of um, horological history and of you know of one of the greatest names um, and again this we are also offering the original box um, for, for for the set um, as a separate lot all right, Shoya, well, thanks for your time today. That was awesome. It was incredible to see these Geneva pieces. But, you know, much as Geneva has awesome stuff, mm -hmm. Hong Kong does as well. Yes, we certainly do. And Hong Kong has an auction coming up at the end of November. Mm -hmm. Let's have just one last look at two beautiful pieces that you have coming sure, up in Hong Kong. Sure, with pleasure. Okay, so the first one that we have here is a beautiful and extremely rare Patek Philippe reference 3448 in platinum. Yes. Only two examples known and ever made. Um, and this present example with sapphire set indexes is unique and if you flip over the watch you have another unusual feature which is the sapphire display case back oh, um, that's amazing spectacular timepiece and we previously sold the other platinum example which was formerly owned by mr. Jean-Claude Beaver um, in a Geneva auction nice okay and then we have this and here we have um, a beautiful Rolex Daytona reference 6241 with a Paul Newman JPS dial uh, from circa 1969. This present example is probably one of the crisp, most crisp examples that I've ever, you know, had the chance to see. It has a 1.9 million serial, so, and it's also a few numbers away from the JPS Hermes that was offered in, uh, in a Geneva auction a few years ago too. So, yeah. Awesome, man. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you for showing all these wonderful pieces. And uh, to you out there, thanks for watching. Thank you very much.